Oh, yes. So the next demo is by Michael Raskin. Um, he's going to talk about accessing local variables during debugging, yeah. which you all know to be useful. Enjoy. Uh, hello, hello, everyone. Yeah, I'm Michael Raskin, Raskin, and I'm presenting well some work that I did together with one of my coworker Nikita Mamardashvili. Uh, and uh, well, it's a pleasure to do a talk here. Maybe it's not completely a pleasure that this topic is relevant, but oh well, <laughs> what can I do? <laughs> uh, so the context. Uh, I really hope that all large programs use local variables. Uh, frankly, look, look at some stuff I uh, sometimes start doubting, but we are not considering those programs that do not use local variables because we, yeah, they're be beyond our hopes. Uh, next, uh, uh, some program even use closure, closures, uh, lexical closures. Uh, we have seen a very nice presentation ab about the more complicated uh, type of such programs today. Uh, well, but in any case, there are even very complicated situations with lexical environments. Uh, and interactive debugging, uh, well, uh, some would benefit that it is more useful and more pleasant when you actually uh, have access uh, and you can inspect the local variables. And it's even better if you can actually call the local functions if there are some. And this happens that there are some local functions you want to call. Uh, the problem is that, well, you need to access them somehow, but common Lisp implementations, of course, have uh, the interactive debugging stuff and they provide access to local variables you, uh, when you debug and to local environment and all that. But there is a small detail. There is such a thing as local variable availability. And for example, in this BCL manual, there is a separate chapter, uh, well, section maybe. It's the level three section. It's not the top level section, fortunately, but still. Uh, variable value availability. And there is a list of conditions, and if you trigger any of these conditions, you are out, uh, you don't have access to this variable if it can't be optimized away. Of course, some of the conditions are easy to avoid. Uh, for example, if you want to debug, you don't comply with optimized debug zero. Uh, but optimize debug three is not enough. There are other conditions, and avoiding all of them also not enough. Uh, because, for example, current SBCL manual uh, doesn't mention uh, constant, uh, well, constant folding, constant propagation, or I don't know how to better call this. But the problem is that if you have uh, something that is technically constant, but you want to calculate this constant in the beginning because they are complicated and you want to make sure you make no mistakes there, and you want to make sure you can actually update the code, uh, it, it may be that you want to calculate a complicated constant uh, expression. And no, you cannot because the SBCL optimizes it all at the way and it just has the final answer somewhere and uses it whenever you use it. Uh, and uh, there is, I haven't found a switch to uh, turn this off. I did try all the trivial stuff. And then uh, there is the single use variables thing uh, that Technically, it is described, and you technically can work around this, but sometimes it is just very convenient to have a variable that you only assign once and only use once, but can inspect. Uh, with SBCL optimizer, it always gets optimized away in some situations, and you cannot f force it not to go away, except by false use, which is always, well, not very pretty. You don't want to do that all the time. Uh, but this is common Lisp, uh, so if you don't have something and you don't get it, well, ready-made, you can brute force it into being, and you can try to uh, create an artificial situation where the compiler has no standard compliant way of completely optimizing away your variables. Uh, you can try to work around and to enforce what you want. Uh, the, so the solution that we tried and which already well makes life somewhat easier is to stash the lexical environments into global variables, 
uh, into global variables uh, using uh, well, and we want that every lexical stack frame has its own value of this global variable, and so we do it via din dynamic scope uh, rebindings. So we can actually go across the frames and see what were the uh, lexical environments and have all the variables preserved and saved. Uh, well, so how do we do it? We code walk the code. Uh, yes, it's the painful part. Uh, notice where lexical environment is supposed to change because if you enter a addition form, you don't expect the lexical variable uh, appear when you enter the addition form. But if you enter a labels form, you, ex you expect to get some new local functions. Maybe it's a trivial labels forms that doesn't declare any local functions, but then, well, it's a rare event. Usually, they, it does declare something. Or if you're into a let form, you also expect to get some, well, some new entries in your list of local variables. And then you just push the names and the values onto a special stack that you declare as a global variable. And, uh, well, I, I don't think any of any implementation would risk uh, optimizing away an entire global variable with, with all its data. Um, but, and so sometimes, sometimes people want to change uh, the value of a variable inside a debugging uh, REPL and continue execution with the new value as if it always was there. And how to support this? You need to save uh, not just the value, but a place reference somehow. And it looks like the standard allows just one safe way to do it. And it is cr just create a function which can uh, change this, uh, which captures this variable binding and can uh, modify this variable value. And it turns that it does work everywhere, and it looks like there is no better way which is also safe. Um, and it just happens that it somewhat works. Uh, so we, well, there are a lot of fun, uh, there, there are a lot of various, uh, uh, well, forms, uh, fun functions and macros that we define. Uh, we define two ways to actually launch the code wrapping. Uh, one of them is just uh, with local wrapper, you wrap some code, and it's, it's, this wrapped code is called walked, and this uh, environment saving code is injected whenever it is needed. And the other way is wrap rest of input. It is a, a dirty trick. Uh, sometimes you want to wrap an entire file, and you really don't want to go uh, and wrap form by form. And on the other hand, uh, if, you wrap, if you just wrap all the file into a single uh, with local wrapper, if any of the forms change the reader behavior, of course it only works after you end reading the current form and now all your file is one form. You really don't want that because it's annoying when your use package stops working. Uh, so rope rest of input is actually a reader trick. We rebind uh, in the opening parenthesis to something which immediately unbinds uh, opening uh, parenthesis, unreads the opening parenthesis character, and reads one form. And also, after reading one form, ropes it into with local roper. Unless it's a def macro form, because for various reasons we don't want to rope def macro forms. Uh, yeah, uh, so we have some tricks, and then we have various pry functions. Uh, well, they have different weights. Uh, I mean that one is very light, and one uh, defines a new package for every invocation. Uh, well, there is some choice. Why pry? Uh, all this uh, work stacked it. When I introduced, well, this uh, Nikita, the micro worker, into the project, which is a common list project, and at some point he said, oh, oh, oh well, how complicated is this uh, local environment? 
Uh, what about I can, in Ruby, I would just run so-called pry and I would call a console into this uh, lexical environment. Oh, no problem, just launch a debugger. Oh, okay, I see. And, where, and why I see only part of the variables, where is the other part? Ouch. And what can we do? Oh, well, uh, this turned out to be the simplest we can do to solve this problem. Uh, so pry is uh, just, I just borrow the name of the correspondent function which you wanted to call in, from the very beginning. And now we can call this function because it is now defined. And then we can list the local bars in the saved environment regardless of what the variable of availability says. We still can look at the list of local variables and access the local variables. And we can also, uh, we have a stack of environments, we can also navigate the stack. And we, there is this, sometimes you don't want to rob everything, you just want to capture a few select environments, and if for some reason you want that, you can just manually do the robbing and inject push like sense to save exactly where you want it. And then you don't depend on most things. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, uh, so yeah, about the different uh, flavors of pry. The lightest one is just a wrapper, a very thin wrapper around uh, C error. We just create a continuable error uh, because it's a very fast way to get a debugging console. Uh, pry looks at all the lexical variables and, cop and temporarily comp copies them to the dynamic environment. It uses proc v around the C error invocation uh, so that we have these dynamic variables, but they have dynamic extent only of the running uh, debugging console. As soon as you leave the debugging console, uh, the dynamic variables disappear, uh, so you don't have the special status interfering with the, the normal uh, continued execution of your program. And also, a pry can even work without roping, but if you do the roping, you have access to all the saved environments. And if you don't do the roping, it just uh, pu pushes the current lexens to stack and inspects the stack of one lexical environment. Uh, so you can just insert it without doing the heavy roping stuff. And then there is PKG pry, which creates a temporary package. And why would it need to create a temporary package? It creates uh, functions uh, with names in that package because uh, I didn't find a way to create a temporary function which would be accessible from debugging console because flat doesn't always play really nice with debugging. Uh, and so it looks like the only reliable option is the fun. But I don't want to define the global functions with the names of the local functions because they will stay after I leave the session. And so I create a new package and then I just have the symbols there with the same symbol names and define them. It's safe because nobody ever refers to this package because it has again sim name and you cannot accidentally refer to freshly again sim package. Oh, well, if you have such accidents, then maybe, maybe, well, you're in the same category as the people who don't have local variables in large programs. <laughs> yeah, maybe you don't need all this. You magically see what happens or don't see and don't care, then no. Uh, yeah, so you can look at what happens. Yeah. And, and uh, so you... you you actually can access the variables just by their names in the price session, uh, but uh, well, if you want to play safe, you can always say uh, use the lock var or local variable. It, it is just aliases. Lock var x to read uh, to read x and lock var with an optional parameter to modify the binding. And they, you also can call local functions with arbitrary arguments. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is the explanation about this. When, we, when do we push that we can manually insert, insert this, or you can let the code walker insert, insert them everywhere. About portability. 
Well, uh, the portability is currently limited by the code walker we use. Uh, there is huge Vim walker package, which has some benefits and some drawbacks. I think the main drawback is that it crashes ECL when we try to load it. <laughs> and it also, uh, yes, it, 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 it would be not that fun if it just lacked support, but it actually gives compiler error. And, but, well, it is large enough that it is not a good bug report to say, oh, this huge bunch of code can crash ECL, and I don't yet have an idea what happens there. Uh, so I cannot get, get a good bug report out of this. Also, Celis uh, support appears to have completely betrothed, and uh, so it also doesn't work, but SBCL and CCL do work. Uh, so what is work in progress? Uh, we need two parts of the walker. There is the stuff that we have an environment, which we have obtained via environment parameter to a macro, and we want to know what are the variable actually named in this environment. Uh, we use this stuff, and we use uh, also the actual code walking. Uh, the work in progress uh, to do something about having a simple, portable, universal code walker to, uh, for, uh, to migrate away from huge Vim walker. I actually already have some, some well, environment inspections, inspe minimal environment inspection support, which is enough for Pry that works on ECL and CLISP too. Uh, well, as for port walker, it's complicated because uh, apparently there is no uh, truly portable code walker, which is not just a huge switch of implementation dependent uh, implementations. Uh, um, yeah, so about the performance impact, uh, we implemented a really, really inefficient exponential time Fibonacci function, which completely consists of entering contexts with new value, with new, new arguments, and leaving them and adding the results. Uh, we hope that this is the worst case because there are a lot of uh, lexical environment switches. Oh yeah, you see, like what you never want to write in production is if you need Fibonacci functions. Uh, and so we measured the performance using the recently resurrected metering package. Uh, you see that SBCL, for some reason, it runs this trash code slower than CCL by 10%. ECL is even slower, and CLISP is an interpreter. Uh, well, what about roping? Uh, if roping only works on CCL and SBCL, but as you see, we have like nine times uh, slow down at CCL and five times slow down at SBCL and we pay like a couple hundred uh, bytes const per call. Uh, well, I say that running the roped code with CCL is still faster than running it with ECL without roping. And this uh, CLISP actually does the correct thing. It does provide you full access to the variables. Uh, the problem is that it doesn't work with CLSQL, for example, so you cannot debug everything on CLISP. And, but, you know, uh, robbed SBCL code still runs much faster than CLISP, so it's not uh, that bad. Oh, well, limitations. I don't know how to make set F on symbols work in this context. I failed to understand it, so you need to call this lock var variable name new value. Uh, there is no access to local macros. It is, among other things, uh, related to how the current walker works. Maybe. And also, so the walker doesn't like to walk def macro forms, but the raw rest of input actually works around this limitation in most simple cases. Uh, well, I can actually show you a bit of demonstration, I think. Uh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, for Maybe to, to, to explain why writing a portable, a good portable walker is hard, I can show you a small demonstration. Impossible, right? Oh. 
I'll. Oh, I, I, I run it in, in, a low, in the wrong director. A, a small demonstration. So I load some file which mm, happens to define some function. And I, and I show you that if I use this function that I get, this function returns T, right? I can actually try to reverse the result and get the new. So I have a normal function called f, right? Okay. Let me show you. So I, now I do the, what I do now. I just do the same. I assign the result of this function to x. And then I say, uh, try to change x. Uh, does everyone agree that theoretically whatever f does, this code should work and not return mysterious mistakes? Well, it doesn't. And why it doesn't? Oh, that's very simple. Uh, function f returns a local implementation specific representation of a symbol macro. And so set a, uh, due to the way how CLISP is implemented, uh, set f on the object representing symbol macro gets expanded in the wrong order. And so it doesn't alter x, it tries to alter the expansion of x. Yeah. And that's why writing this stuff is, uh, well, complicated. Um, uh, the, other, the other thing is, uh, well, the other demonstration that life is hard, oh, well, and uh, writing macro expanders is fun, is the following example of using macro expand damage. Because we have, mm, can we do something about this? No, about the, the lowest row. Ah, child. Hey. Mm, okay. Hey, what happens? All right. Okay, I will do that. Let's be here. Right? Yeah. Now I have this. What the hell? Ah. Uh, well, the point is that at some point I, I decided to show you that it is easy to get a wrong uh, uh, There is only one known portable uh, code walker, and it is a special case. It is macro expand damn it. It is, uh, uh, the, the problem is that it is quite easy, well, after all this stuff, it's quite easy to get wrong result out of it. Yeah, so I def macro f to be equal to 1. I say that f is, f, macro f returns 1, actually, and macro expand gives 1. Uh, and macro expand damn it correctly, macro expand the call to f inside. Uh, and now I say that f let overrides macro, uh, def macro, and this is correct, and this is how standard describes it. Uh, unfortunately, if I try to macro expand this code, uh, if I try to r r run macro expand damn it, it turns out that macro expand damn it uh, tries to actually expand the f inside a flat binding because it doesn't process a flat completely right. And that is, uh, and you know, it's not because of lack of effort. It's just because it's hard to process uh, code walking correctly, especially if you are doing it in a portable way. And yeah, it's a good, it's just an example. And that's why I still have to say that getting a better walker is a work in progress and not something that I have done, unfortunately. I really want to have a, a good walker. Oh, uh, okay. Hey. Okay. Yeah. Again, plenty of time for questions. Go ahead. Um, there's less a question, and one thing you might want to try if you want to avoid code walking on the implementation. 
implementations that have the common list of language to compatibility stuff. Uh, you're able to inspect macro uh, environments. Now they have a thing that lets you check any declares that's on a local variable. You can't get the list of local variables. But seeing as you're not afraid of hacks, you can loop over every exported symbol in the package, check, and catch anything that doesn't throw an exception, you get a list of <coughs> Exported is wrong. Uh, but maybe you want to look at all the form and check uh, for every, in, in check for the entire uh, list, uh, yeah, and check all the symbols mentioned in the file. That's yeah, true. The ones that don't throw exceptions. Uh, the problem, well, the problem is that I'm actually not sure how to get the list of declarations portably. Uh, oh well, yeah, maybe maybe it is better, maybe not. I'm not yet sure. Well, we try to implement something quickly, and using Hudwim Walker was the best way if we only cared like about SBCAN first. And yeah, maybe what you say is uh, one good approach. Yeah. Yeah. So one one uh, roadblock that I that might be causing problems in the CLN is this lambda block. Uh, uh, so, so look for lambda block. It's like lambda. It's a function lambda stuff. They implemented it in the CLN to take a lambda block and put it into function, uh, and that may be quite a problem with the code block. I ran into it when I was importing all that code to the class. Oh, wow, I don't have anything working on ECL. Thanks for the heads up. Uh, yeah. yeah. That might be what's causing you to freeze there. I don't know. Uh, well, no. In, on the, the crash uh, related to ECL is not, is not at the code walking stage. It is just when loading the infrastructure they use uh, to do all the aspect oriented stuff around the code walking. It crashes at that stage. I, maybe what you say is still relevant to it. I will, well, maybe at some point I will try to look into it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, this is more of a comment, but so in, in class, I have written, I have two compilers in there. One of them, if I understand you correctly, you're, to, to get the lexical variable, you are putting everything into a closure here. Right? Uh, well, to be able to modify lexical bindings, I put everything into closures because I didn't find any port table other way. <laughs> Could you explain to me perhaps I, is your work intended to make it so that is your work intended to defeat some compiler feature that eliminates local variables so that they don't show up in the backtrace or is your work more to compensate for deficiencies for for uh, yeah for deficiencies in the Lisp implementations debugger. Well, the problem is that uh, well you can only call deficiencies things that go contrary to the standard, and the problem with the, with optimizers is that it's very hard to write a correct optimizer. And if it technically is correct uh, from the point of view that it uh, preserves the behavior of all non-erroring uh, uh, compliant programs, then it may be a hard sell uh, trying to tweak this behavior in a risky way. Uh, so, so, well, in some sense, it's a, an attempt to defeat a feature which is misfeature for our use case, but which is not a violation of anything uh, by, well, making code that makes this behavior an actual violation of standard in some sense. Yeah. So even, even if you compile with you know, a higher debug setting, yes. are, are, are you... I tried debug are you, are you running Are you running into cases where op optimizations are happening that prevent you from inspecting local variables, mm. even at, say, debug three? Yes. Wow, debug three speed zero is the first thing we try. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't help any because, as I said, uh, constant folding and uh, a single use optimization. Okay. I, I, it seems like I'd be complaining to my Lisp implementer. My Lisp implementer. 
Uh, well, as I said, I, I would have to ask for a risky and maybe hard change in the code, which is a wonderful piece of engineering, just not exactly what I personally need. That's the problem. Okay, we have time for one more question in the back. Yeah, do you still have a question? No. Do you not? Then you go. Awesome. Okay, then. Yeah, just one more comment. Even in LLVM, where they have a lot more resources than we have here, um, with the old debug information, they still lose flexible variables. Flexible variables will not show up sometimes if you want So we could work here and then that's the hard part of our Wow. Yeah. Fortunately, I now have the solution on SBC. Uh, <laughs> okay, I actually have a slide beyond the last. Uh, now I have a question. What other annoying but actually easy to solve problems we are missing? And one other harder question is uh, how to actually do a portable code walker. And I am look uh, currently studying macro expand damage to find out. <laughs> <laughs>